There's no avoiding infinite scroll. It seems to be all over the place. And if you want to scrape data from a site like this, you're going to need a few different techniques in your back pocket. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use Playwright to scroll down to the bottom of a page each time to load up more data. And then we're going to combine that with my favorite way of getting data from a website, and that's the backend API. So every time we scroll down, it's going to fire off that Ajax request, and we're going to be able to intercept it using Playwright and print it all out to the page. This is a pretty good technique to know how to use when you're thinking about web scraping, although one that you might not use as common, but I like it because it's really easy to set up and get going and is really good for exploratory, figuring out what's going on on a website. So let's get started. We are using Playwright and it's the Sync API and this is my basic function. So all this is gonna do is it's gonna load up a browser. I've chosen to not have headless so we can see it. I'm changing the viewport size, otherwise it's really small on my screen, which is a bit annoying. Go to the website. I've put a sleep in here just to make it a bit easier. Click OK on cookies and then wait for something to happen. So let's run this now and we should get our browser pop up and there's our page and we'll have the cookie pop up and it will click yes except once the page has hit network idle which is pretty useful wait there we go it's done and it closes this video is sponsored by scraping bee a real-time web scraping api that solves a web scraper's two biggest issues javascript rendering and proxy management scraping bee will handle your headless browsers and manage rotating proxies for you giving you a simple to use api to integrate into your own system or project the hardest part of scraping is always getting the data in the first place, so why waste time, effort and resources doing it yourself? Scraping Bee uses the latest Chrome browsers for quick and easy rendering and page loading, taking away the issue of the heavy resource usage compared to running your own stack of Chrome instances. You can also send custom JavaScript snippets to evaluate on the page, for example, scrolling down like the one we use in this video right here. This on top of a large proxy pool that will all auto rotate and are geolocated mean a very quick and efficient data extraction and web scraping experience for you or your development team. There's a Python package too on pip to make your life even easier if you're a Python developer like me. So if you think any of this is appealing then go ahead and click on the link in the description below and check out Scraping B for yourself. So we want to scroll down. Now there, as I mentioned, there are three different ways I'm going to show you how to do this. They're all pretty simple. It's up to you which one you choose to use, but they do have their limitations because we are going to have to execute the key press or the mouse wheel or the JavaScript each time to keep going down. That's going to involve some kind of loop. So let's go ahead and put it in here. We'll just have our, uh, let's have a quick Comment here, scroll down, and then I'm gonna do 4x in range. And we'll say to start with, just do one to five. And then we can put in our first one, which is going to be the key press and the end key. So if you're on the website and you hit end, it goes to the bottom, fairly self-explanatory. So we're gonna mimic that. So we can do page.keyboard.press and then put in here the end key like this. What I'll do is I'll print out uh, some text here so I can say scrolling key press and then we'll just have the number there. Then we will have our just put in a little sleep so we can really see what's going on. So this is basically going to do exactly what you think it's going to do. It's going to load up. It's going to uh, click on the cookies thing which keeps popping up which is a pain and then it's just going to hit that end key each time and I don't have any implicit waiting or anything like that but you may want to do that if you're really working on it there we go you saw it scroll down pretty self-explanatory so that's one way of doing it uh, recently I think in one of the more recent versions of playwright you can actually do mouse wheel as well which is also a pretty good one so we're going to go ahead and change the keyboard here and we can do page dot mouse uh, dot wheel and then we need to give it some coordinates to scroll so we want to put something like zero and then i think maybe fifteen thousand or ten thousand uh, the second number being the x-axis which is down um, there we go so that should do exactly the same thing so we'll run this and we should get scroll all the way to the bottom of the page five times like we did before Works pretty well, as you can see. 
The last one we can do is we can actually execute some JavaScript. We can evaluate JavaScript code on this page, which we can then use to do exactly the same thing, just go to the bottom of the page. So let's remove this. And again, we'll put in here, uh, this is what it looks like. So I don't have to type that out again. You can see all we're doing is we're using JavaScript to scroll down. So let's go ahead and run it again and we'll see you'll get the same exactly the same thing. But what we need to think about whilst this is doing this is what's actually happening when we scroll down each time. Well, let's go ahead and look at the network tab in the browser so we can actually see what's going on. So I'm going to come back to this other one, we're going to do inspect, we'll go network and there we go. Hopefully I can make this a bit bigger. If not, I'll just zoom in on it. So every time we scroll down, I'm going to keep scrolling. We'll see that we get these requests here. Now these ones are the ones that have all of the product information in. So every time we scroll down, not all these T's are, it's a bit annoying analytics. We get a new set of products, which is exactly what we would expect. There's another one at the bottom. There's another one. You can see them coming through. Now, what I generally say to people when uh, they're looking at scraping a site like this is to actually go ahead and grab this request and try to mimic it from outside of Playwright. This has its advantages because A, we can be much quicker and you can often tailor the request to what you actually want. But in some cases like this, you can just let the browser do it if you don't need to worry about overhead or if you don't need to worry about overall scraping speed, you just want to monitor this set of products you can absolutely make Playwright work for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna amend our code just a little bit so every time we hit one of these requests, it's going to spit out all of this JSON data. So we could then just basically save it or pass it, whatever you wanna do with it. So let's go back to our code. I'm gonna keep with the JavaScript scroll just for the sake of it for now. And we're gonna build out and we're actually gonna use the network events in Playwright to grab that information. So when we use these network events, it's basically gonna trigger on the response. So we need to set in here somewhere, we're gonna do it uh, just up underneath our viewport size, we're gonna do page.on. This is gonna give us access to the actual uh, event. As you can see, it's telling me there all about the events. We could have a look at this and read this if you wanted to. And somewhere down here is response, there we go. So this is the one that we're gonna use. So we're gonna say on, the event of response and this is every time that there is a uh, request and a response that this happens when this page is loading up what we want to do here is we want to actually access this and we can pass it a handler function into this so we'll say lambda first and the response which is going to give us access to this data so let's take a look at all of the responses so let's go ahead and just print out our response.url Okay, so I'm going to save and then we shall run our code again and we're going to see a lot of stuff coming up here. So this is all of the data transferring, the network transferring that's happening when this page is loaded up. Now you can see there's an awful lot going on here and this would be exactly the same that you would see if you were to look at that network tab, although on the other browser I had it filtered. So what can we do with this? Well, we're gonna need to filter this out. There's a few different ways that you can do this because you have access to this response URL, the response body, the response headers, but one of the easiest ways to do it is just to try and pass each response body with JSON, as JSON and see if it accepts it. So let's go ahead and have a new function we're gonna pass into our response instead of just printing. So we'll say, I'm gonna call this uh, check JSON and we need to pass in the response that we're gonna get, response, like this. Let's give ourselves a bit of space. So in this function, we're going to use an if statement because we want to see if the word products is in the response. So if I go back to the response that we were looking at before with all the product data, the actual request URL has the word products in it. So we're only interested in this URL. So we'll say if uh, products is uh, in response.url, then we're going to uh, print out and just pass out the JSON data from it. So I'll just say URL is equal to response dot url and then the body can be a response dot json so at the moment i'm going to assume that if products is in that url response then i am going to be able to access the json data because it will be json if we have errors with this 
what we'll do is we'll add in a try and accept and we'll handle the error which will probably be a decode error we will see where we get to so now we have our handler function for check JSON what we can do is instead of printing out here let's remove this we can do our check JSON for the response that we're going to send there so now when I run this again, we should hopefully get some bit more of a bit more useful information. So let's give it a go. Okay, so we did indeed get some product information, but my scroll stopped working uh, because I've removed it by accident here. So I just need to put that back in. I wondered why we weren't scrolling. That will be my uh, Vim skills letting me down. But do, per do persevere with Vim, trust me, in that respect. I'm going to remove the print for scrolling. We don't need to see that anymore. And let's try it again. And we should get a load of product information come through every time we scroll down the page on the right. We should get the JSON data in our program on the left. Let's see. There we go. So you can see we're getting more and more information each time it's all come through. Uh, this has failed, so I think this is probably to do with um, the waiting or the browser closed before everything else was done. So we would want to handle that some way, but you can see where I'm getting at with this method. Every time we scroll down, we get a new chunk of product data for, that for the browser to load up in the page using JavaScript. We can actually intercept that by just pulling that information directly from the browser and having it here in its JSON glory in our terminal. From here, what I would expect to do would be just to iron out a few of the kinks. The time.sleeps aren't great. You want to look at using the playwright uh, wait commands, wait on element, I think, or uh, uh, wait for load state is a good one. I'm using that here. And then you can actually just choose how you want to handle that JSON data as if you would it came from anywhere. Super cool method, very useful um, in certain situations, a good one to know. If you've enjoyed this and you want to know a bit more about how to handle that JSON and how to work with that specific method more targeted, you're going to want to watch this video right here where I go into it in a lot more detail.